a question for you. Um, you know, like we've been hearing quite a lot about 50, the idea of 15 mini, minute cities in the UK um, and the um, creation of them that they, they seem to be coming in. Is there a similar thing going on in Portugal? I've heard that um, there is sort of like different zones cropping up around Lisbon. Um, and, 15 and, minute cities. Is that yeah. like those kinds of cities where you can get anything done in 15 minutes? You, well, um, I think the whole idea is, um, you know, like governments are all talking about climate agendas and how mm. um, we, you know, like to, to save the planet, you know, um, different like in, in Oxford, for instance, in the UK, um, they're, they're they're having like these these zones that you can drive in and you're not allowed to drive out or you have an allowance of how often you leave that place or there's extra costs to leave that place. And the whole idea is that the city starts to build in all the resources that you might need within a, a 15 minute radius. That with- sounds like marriage. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like marriage. It sounds like lots of different things. It's I haven't heard like- anything. I had not have heard anything of the sort around here and, um, uh- Hopeful. The, the sense I get is that um, Portuguese people as a whole, they're very much mm-hmm. like, hey, you do you, have fun, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but they are highly resistant to all of these, you know, trends and, um, and things that go out there, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, recycling, we have recycling bins and all of those things. But when people start doing these more dramatic uh, demonstrations and political stuff. It's like, shut up. Just let yeah. me do my thing. Well, I'm, I, I'm curious to ask about, like, you know, obviously, um, if the EU start to enforce some of these things, how, like, you know, like at the moment, the EU um, has, um, uh, like, like I think um, Holland at the moment, the Netherlands, is um, reclaiming all the farmland and kicking the farmers off and saying, well, for climate, we need to get rid of all of the um, cows. They're a climate disaster. And they're reclaiming the land, kicking the farmers off, kind of buying them out and and giving them like no competition contracts and things. And I think they're trialing it in, in, in the Netherlands. And, you know, I'm wondering like what's likely to happen? You know, if the EU put pressure on Portugal, what do you think Portugal is going to do? Portugal will just bend over. They'll pick up the soap and stay down there as long as they need. So uh, Portuguese governments and everything are very much, you know, just do whatever they're told. Um, so, so they'll they'll like, you know, they've got the. <laughs> I love I love the fact that you said, oh, um, you know, we're kind of like you do you, we'll do us, kind of just like leave us alone. But like then when the EU come in and there's a bit of pressure, you think everyone will cave like what what do you think will happen in terms of the farming community if that kind of thing starts to occur do you think there'll be a backlash or i i i don't know i mean people i feel like the portuguese people just um as long as you let them do their thing they're okay right um but um i, I don't know I, I really don't know what would happen I just know that all of these things, it, it, it seems so silly to me because they're always trying to find a new boogeyman and mm-hmm. uh, something new to rile behind. And it's like, we already have so many effective solutions, but they don't feel cool. So people yeah. don't do it. And I know this might be a little bit controversial because there's not a lot of good information about it. But every time I hear governments and whatever complaining, oh, my God, the environment and energy and pollution. Just use nuclear energy. It's the greenest energy we have. Like there's um, a U.S. battleship, Mm -hmm. you know, one of those huge plane carrier boats Mm -hmm. that's been running for over 30 years with a tennis ball sized uh, ball of uranium. Yeah. And it provides a whole energy for the thing for decades. Mm-hmm. Like, and it is safe. Like, people always mention Fukushima and um, and Chernobyl. But it's like, okay, great. Out of the hundreds, if not thousands of nuclear plants all over the world, you mm-hmm. only know two disasters in decades when they were doing unethical experiments and things. And if you go there, life is flourishing. 
Yeah. Like, if you actually Google uh, the deaths, normal, like, the, the land has all come back to normal, hasn't it? Yes, but that's uh, again. Uh, I I don't want to get into a uh, huge political debate here, but for me, my issue with so much of the planning, and I was going to make this uh, this outsider's observation of the Portuguese government, which tends to make a decision and then try to deal with the backlash. Uh, you know, putting out the, all the fires they created by making that decision yeah. rather than planning, you know, how do we avoid the fires in the first place before yeah. we implement policy? That's sort of been my observation. Yeah. Humans yeah. tend to be, uh, well, not all humans, but at least uh, uh, humans in developed nations tend to be very short-sighted. This is the fix for now. Yes, it's yeah. cheaper. Yes, it doesn't create a mess right now, except in very rare occasions. But it also produces this waste that takes hundreds or thousands of years to disperse, if ever. And what do we do with that waste as we're accumulating it to provide the safety and the cheapness of the power? So we don't think seven generations in advance. It's just right now, right now, right now. That's my argument yeah. with, with electric cars and other things. You know, Oh, this is the, the fix it. Yes, for now it is. But what's the longer term? What do we do with the batteries when they don't work anymore? What are, you know? What we, for me, the planning needs to be very long term if anything is going to work. And maybe there is a long term solution for nuclear. Maybe there's you know maybe there's not. I don't know any of that. I just say this is how we need to think. We have to stop being in such a freaking hurry to deal with it right this second and yes. let the consequences be damned. We'll, mm. we'll let the kids figure that out. We'll be there. Please, please forgive me because I realise that, um, you know, in asking about 15-minute cities and, and those kinds of things, just because you were mentioning about a smart meter, I remember, like, um, being quite not opposed to, to smart meters, but there's a lot of smart technology coming in, isn't it? Um, isn't there? And, um, and they often run on... Um, um, different like radio waves and things like that and I, I don't really like the idea of that um, but I didn't realize that you know I would kind of throw this little bomb in and it could oh, like really explode Ooh, and, yeah it doesn't uh, take much <laughs> <laughs> and I imagine it's going to create a bit of a shit show um, for a lot of people watching because there's going to be lots of people that believe in nuclear lots of people that will have a very strong opinion about nuclear also with electric cars and um, solar energy and all sorts of different things. One of the things that um, comes up for me quite a bit is um, the, the idea that there's, there's, it, it, it would appear that there's a, a narrative that seems to emerge from the EU and from a lot of superpowers saying this is the way and you can't discuss anything else. And so that's why I like to bring these things up. Um, but maybe I should have allowed for a bit more time. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I know that when I was growing up, it was like, oh, my God, Yules and Layer were like, uh, we only have one year, otherwise it's too late. And now, but yeah, well, it has been going on for years, hasn't yeah. it? I mean, old. Um, uh, it's what's like what's there's, there are always these environmental panics and then it always ends up to be nothing. And Well, yeah, it, like yeah. your US guy, is it John Kerry? Oh. Is that the guy who talks about climate disaster? And all the things he's prophesied have not happened. Not, not at yeah, all. Yeah. Um, so, all the, the way I see it is the drum have their beach houses not sunken at all. <laughs> yes. yes. But the way I see it is this. Like, definitely do what's good for the environment and everything. Uh, not because I think if, um, if we use plastic straws, all of the turtles are going to die or anything. Mm. But it's like, just maintain the place where you live. Don't yeah. throw the trash on the floor. It looks bad. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. Like the it's earth is your home. Life. Treat it like that. Well, some people you wouldn't want treating it like they treat their homes. But yes, if yeah. you're going to take care of it, you yeah. know. It's as simple as that. Like cars, right? The black smoke that comes out of some cars. It's like even if that that wouldn't like destroy the environment or anything, it smells. It still smells bad. So take care of it. It's simple. I do. I do really like. Um, um, what you were saying, James, about, you know, like the, the seven generations, you know, like we often, um, or governments in particular, are often, you know, suggesting things. Um, and you, you, you think, oh, well, that looks like a quick fix. And I think people expect a quick fix, but people aren't so invested in the long term future because it might create a little bit of pain or anxiety or whatever. It's, it's mm -hmm. quite a big subject. Anyway, I need to wrap this up. And I can see there's a bit of a conversation going on about fish and chips. 